So, welcome to lecture video about distribution. And our topic for today will be focusing on the evaluation of text and images in multicultural contexts. This is very, very useful in today's time, especially we are in time where people are campaigning. Uh, we are in the period of campaign where pol politicians are, are trying to give as much information as they can. And it's up to us whether we analyze this, this text and images that they are going to spread in the internet, social media, where it is very, very widespread, uh, including fake news, including false information. So our goal as um, evaluators of the text and images in multicultural uh, setup this is still in the globalization uh, topic. So we have to, to be vigilant about this one. So let's start with, with this photo. What can we say about this photo? What can we say about the, the caption? And does it suit really the caption and the photo itself? No, according to the caption, it talks about Lenny Robredo that uh, is not upper sleeves for anything so it's the caption all about but when we are going to criticize the photo based on our understanding and our uh, yeah and our own perception um we will be concluding that this picture is also is, is uh is lenny rubredo no when we when we try to look at in the facade of the picture itself with no uh, analyzation at all. But when in fact, this is not Lenin Rupredo and the caption itself does not speak for the picture. This is a false information. And um, clearly this is nothing, has nothing to do with Lenin Rupredo picture because uh, this is not Lenin Rupredo. All this is a doctor from Marquina Hospital. And this was taken by a photojournalist uh, Nino or Beta uh, in March 2 last year. I think this was widespread and became viral last year. So that's the work of evaluation of, of text and ultra in, in images in multicultural setup. So when we talk about uh, being cautious and vigilant about the things that we are reading, we are not easily get um persuaded by by, by those uh, things posted in social media first we have to check if the source is legit if the information is legit and the source came from a credible and reliable source uh, we are not uh, endorsing any candidates here this is only purely academic purposes we are trying to to be remain neutral as possible i'm neutral so we do not take this as campaign for other candidates or uh, giving credit to other people in, in terms of their time. So when we do fact check, again, let's check whether the caption really matters and is it uh, going uh, with, with the picture itself. So we cannot deny the similarities in terms of the Appearance because of face and glasses, no, but well, we have to back check. Another thing that it made the picture viral is that the doctor or Dr. Grana did not roll her roll up her sleeves no during the injection for the vaccination. So they haven't seen the the cut in the, the sleeves no that made the that made the doctor easier for to for them to, to inject in her arm. So that's also became an issue. So that's how you fact check information. Also, when we talk about um, easily persuaded by people, the the things that they easily read in the 
social media. Example here, you know, this became famous also last year because of the issue of China being part of the Philippines or we are already a part of the, the China. So we became, according to them, we became the province of China, Philippines. But uh, when you're going to check it in the internet, we are still a sovereign and independent country. We are not part of any province of China at all. So do your fact check. So this is false information also in circulating in the internet. The third one is the danger of one-sided story. This is very common to media and television practitioners who are giving information to the public. Also, this became meme because of person giving a dirty finger. But in fact, this is not a dirty finger at all. This is giving three fingers for a sign or something. Uh, momentarily, that it captured one um, violent photo, perhaps that they can say it. But in fact, now we have to check every angle and every side of the story before we judge the the picture or the the person. So that's how um, delicate it is now. We are only focusing on one-sided story. Now, our work as evaluators and uh, person who analyze things now in the 21st century, we are expected to become critical leaders and at different text types reflecting different cultures. Text provide the means for communicating and form. Uh, and form an important part of study in any given course. It is important to understand how the features of text affect reading comprehension, particularly in examining similarities and differences of the traditional print base in Mutai, the text. We are having a print based. Now, when we talk about multi modality, there are a lot of modalities involved. We have print based, we have visual materials, we have multimedia uh, sources. No? So when we talk about print base, it refers to the text that are prepared in prints, but any text is multimodal text when it involves various communication modalities. Hence, multimodal text refers to those types of text that use a combination for more communication modes. For instance, print image and spoken text as in film or computer presentations. In today's time, no, we are living in the advent of digital environment or the internet or social media. Most of informations are unfiltered. That's the reason why we have to be vigilant. Um, unfiltered making it uh, Authenticity, validity, reliability, questionable. So we have to check the author, we have to check the background of the author, where the message came from, where the text came from, or where the image came from. Uh, where, where, where did it came from? So the abundance of information from various media, namely short message, service, electronic mail, Social media, print and electronic journals, periodicals, and advertisements also pose a challenge for you in terms of evaluating and understanding it fully. So even the media can alter the messages, sources. So you have to bear in mind that uh, all of the things that you are reading may not be true. So you, you always have to, to do fact check. So that's the the beauty of this discourse now we have to analyze things now based on whatever we are reading so when we talk about multimodal text again this is the use of multi modalities or many modalities not only one two but there are various modalities in both so when the text combines two or more semiotic systems uh, these are linguistic visual audio gestural and spatial um, 
it is considered multimodal. No? Later, I will be discussing linguistic, visual, audio, gestural, and spatial. So semiotic is the study of meaning making. It explores signs and symbols as important components of communication. The syllabus of the Australian curriculum mentions that the language modes such as listening and speaking, reading, writing, and viewing and representing are often integrated and interdependent activities used in evaluating texts in order to shape meaning and that any combination of modes may be involved in responding to any composing print, sound, visual, multimedia text. Hence, multimodal text can be print, digital, or live. Now, for the print media, anything that is printed in the paper or any uh, paper-based instructions no, or uh, form that is print-based, such as books, comics, posters, magazines, and even the newsprints or the the newspapers are considered as multimodal text in paper. Uh, so it can be one form. Another form can be into the digital, no? uh, such as infographics, the things that you have seen online or in social media that has text in it and visuals on it and can be used in computer-based like slice presentations, uh, can be sent in the emails, ebooks, e posters, web pages, social medias, animation, film, movies, videos, and many more. Um, anything that, that is being sent digitally can be in form of the model text. And lastly, I think uh, the live uh, form of multimodal text. Now. Usually, this live can be in form of recorded or or in a stream, no? but usually live performances or actual performances in the, in the event is thinking up into one particular place where people and uh, there's a camera being pointed at them and being uh, streamed online or by the people to view it on the comforts of their homes. And when we talk about semiotic systems, these are the things that I mentioned a while ago. There are five of them. There are uh, these are, are very important uh, systems that involves uh, that are involved in in the multimodal texts or multimodalities. So when we talk about linguistic system, it refers to the linguistic components such as vocabulary structure grammar of the text so anything that you can see with the use of the structure of the text including the spelling the grammar the vocabulary use and um how 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 the sentences being structured for example in a post in social media can be in a form of linguistic system so uh with the use of this we can create a conclusion we can analyze text carefully because it is written. Now, with the help of another visual system, uh, it will be easier for us to, to imagine things no? because it has already a visual uh, help. No? So it pertains to the color, vectors, viewpoint, still images, twin images. No? So that is visual system. It can either be a recorded video, uh, video presentation, infographic video, or in or, or still photos or photography. So uh, the things that you are seeing in the social media with the help of the caption, the text, no, is a multimodal uh, text uh, which we are trying to be uh, critical in terms of reading analysis. So the number three the moment when the visual aids and the moving images is associated with, with audio. So when they add an audio, automatically it will add into the audio system. So this mode refers to the volume, pitch, and rhythm of music and sound effects of a presentation. Number four is gestural system. It denotes the movement, facial expression, and body language of the character. So this talks about the movement of the body and uh, smiling of the person, the facial expression in 
in the camera. So that, that involves the gestural system. Also, the last part or the last system is spatial. It indicates proximity, distance between the person talking and the person listening. And for example, in an interview, if you show the layout, backdrops, tables and the chairs, the organizations of the objects in space. So that is a spatial system. So those are five multimodal uh, semiotic systems that we use in multimodality text when we are doing a critical reading uh, analysis. So as a competent communicator, you should be able to evaluate, manage, and use information effectively to enhance your message, to improve your receptive skills, such as listening, reading, viewing skills, and accomplish a specific purpose. So one best way to evaluate messages and images is through critical reading. I will be giving you some of the qualities of good critical reader. And uh, I want you to check yourselves when you are given these qualities, whether you possess these qualities or not. If not, of course, you have to work it out. So as one of the categories of reading skills along the rapid reading, doing literal reading and inferential reading, critical reading involves studying and evaluating text closely in terms of their relevance, their validity, and their logic. Now, the goal of the critical reading is to examine not only with what the message is uh, giving you, is conveying, but also how the message is conveyed, as well as the purpose of the message, the target of the audience, the context of the message, and overall, what's the purpose of all of this no? in, in other ways of presenting. Essentially, uh, critical reading requires you to be an investigator, break down a text to appreciate and understand it break, uh, better. When you break down the text, you have to do some analysis on title, the description, the body, you know, the introduction, the main um, content, and then the the evaluation of the class or the conclusion of text. And it's how you break down the text appropriately, appreciate and understand it better. Now, these are the qualities of a critical reader. Number one, annotates the text by writing or using sticky notes. Uh, another skill you need to develop is the, the skill of taking, no? or the skill of writing it down annotates the text no? so that you can clearly break down the text that uh, you are reading. Determines and analyze the organization patterns. You might be able to compare and contrast the cause and effect, description, narration, definition, or persuasion of the text. Ask critical questions that promotes analysis, synthesis, and evaluation of the text and considers the cultural and historical background of the text or image. Why do we need to consider the cultural and historical? Um, because it has already been studied long time ago. It is already an established fact which you can use as a support to your claims. No? So that's the reason why cultural and historical background are important. Distinguishes facts and opinions um, that might come in handy. Evaluates the author's credibility by checking his or her credentials, academic and scholarly background. So you have to check whether the person is in line on whatever he is saying. If the person is not in line with whatever he is saying, or for example, the topic, uh, probably that will cost him as an opinionated statement, not a credible statement based on the facts that he is uh, well-versed of. So evaluates the source of the text and image, looks beyond the text or ideas that are not explicitly stated, and makes inferences about the text or images and the author's ideas, biases, claims, and views. Also, you are assessing the usefulness and relevance of the text by previewing or reading the titles, tables of content, summaries, abstracts, introductions, conclusions, heading, and subjects. This 
is what I mean when you are going to break down those, those texts. Now, read with specific question in mind, always be inquisitive, no? And uh, read with an open-minded uh, self, no? Mind. Now, here are the general guide questions in evaluating a text. These are tips no, on how you are going to evaluate a text. And these are the questions that you might encounter or you might store into your mind when you are dealing with certain texts when you are evaluating. Now, there are source, context, content, audience. No? And in, in evaluating a text, for evaluating an image, there are somehow similarities with the evaluating the text. So source is still there, context is still there, con content is still there, and uh, the audience is still there. However, when we talk about evaluating a image, we can add a visual quality and the appearance also, the image quality. Uh, later, I'll be giving some of the questions that you need to bear in mind. So for the source, in terms of evaluating a text, you have to uh, ask, of course, first and foremost, so that, that, what is the source? When was the text published? And are the titles or headers, tables, content, summaries, abstracts, introductions, the way you break down the text? Is it useful? Is the source being useful or is the source relevant or is the source reliable? So those are the questions that you need to ask when you talk about source. Now about the context, of course, you have to ask whether the what is the context of the text? What pieces of information are given that provide the context of the text? And when we talk about content, what is the message all about? What it is, what its purpose, no? What are the facts or figures that supports the message? How is the message conveyed by the text? And what is the tone of the text? Or what words contribute to frame to frame the message of the text? And how do you think the audience might be affected the way that this is written? And when we talk about the audience, who is the target audience? Or what information is provided that give you the idea about the target audience of the text? Now, uh, when we talk about evaluating images, still we still have the source. Uh, so who is the source of the image? You have to ask that again. How did you find the source? Are the pieces of information about the source of the image? And how did you know the source? Is the source information reliable and valid? And when we talk about context, can you determine the information which Companies, the image, does the information provide the context for the image or where, when, why, and how for whom the image is or WH question. So we might want to ask that. For the content, uh, what are contained in the images? Who are the persons involved, people involved, animals, objects in the image? How are they presented? What's the meaning of those images? What does the image say? Is it clear or not? No? What are the elements of the image support the image or the message? What feelings does the message or what do others see the image? So those are the... For the audience, uh, of course, you have to ask what is their target audience? Is it minor? Is it a regular or for the people? Or is it... The old ones. No? What information is provided that gives you an idea about the so the image? And uh, the author, is it credible? What's the purpose of the author? It is giving information. Is it giving persuasion or entertainment? And what is the name of the author? Is the author? Is the author credible? What are his or her potentials? And also to add on, uh, this is the difference between the text and the image. We have the visuals. The visual is very important in the images because you have to think of critically when we are talking about images, you know, the visual effect, uh, including the layout, the design, the color, and how 
are they being used? Um, is it to give a certain image, as, as give a, a certain name for, for, for candidate, for example, no? Because the candidates are fun using color coding schemes, no? So they are helpful in framing messages in the image. So can you identify what is the foreground, the background, you know, so that's the visual. So for the technical quality, uh, what can you say about the color size of the image? Is it blurry? Is it HD? Is it good quality? Is the size good enough for me to see? Is it uh, Photoshop? Is it altered? Not so you have to be vigilant in terms of the quality or technicality of the image. What can you say about the quality of the image or is it copyrighted or so always remember when that is copyrighted, are not going to uh, use it or uh, you're not allowed to get the, the copyrighted name on it. You might use it, but you have to ask permission for the person to, uh, for the owner of the, the image. No? That's why there is a watermark some of the images no? because they don't want their own image by, the, by other people. Okay, so this is the last message that I will be giving you to end our topic for the evaluation of text and, and image. No? So always be critical and be aware as you read, watch, listen, and hear in social media or mass media or in television. Be alert in many forms of biases so you have to fact check you have to search for the sources is it reliable okay so that ends our topic for visualization thank you very much for listening